I compared it to other uses of that same type of language in another book. It's not saying that this will happen because they do that. He say he you done that, so I will do this. Yes. In the same way. Are you saying this that God cannot do this? He must do this. What I'm saying is God is just. Come on, guys. God is just. God is just. And God is not evil. You say it's just. You say it's God is just. Yeah. Then you can't punish someone with rape. No. You can't change someone's mind. No, no, no. What I'm saying is God is just. If you done adultery. Yeah. God, no just judge will say oh, now your wife is sleeping with the neighbor. Yeah. We say that that that, that judge is not just. Right. You agree with me? Yeah. Here, yeah. David and Bathsheba committed adultery. Yeah. God said to David, instead of punishing him stone to death, he said, I will take your wife and give it to the neighbor. Is it? What? Is it? Is it? Right. That's what I'm saying. Is, is, Samuel, so that, chapter 12, yeah. verse 11 to 12. Yeah. Read, I'll read it again. You, you need to demonstrate that, that the that's Lord. the correct way of looking at it. When I've already shown you other ways where that type of language is used, and that's not the interpretation. I'm sorry, sorry, you just bring from somebody else, some other example, and just fixing in here, you can't just... No, I, I use reason and context. Whereas you don't want context or reason. You're saying, because God says he does it, that must mean in a literal, direct way. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So did God pick him up and literally put no. him over? No, no, no. No, no. 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 Why not? Why not? It says, he says he did it, no, no. so he must have picked him up. What it says, he, he does. Don't really he does. What? And that... Second Samuel chapter 11. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. And what verse? Chapter 12, sorry. Okay. Verse 11 and 12. Let him finish it to give a chance. And the second point was why David and Bathsheba wasn't stoned to death. Because that's the law that men have to carry out, and in this case, God intervened and he he he, um, he made an exception in that case, which is his right, because he is the author of the divine law. Exception for the king. Huh? So God being biased, he say, okay, you are a special person. You are you are David. You, yeah. you okay. So wait, wait. Who sets the law? The rest of the Israel, who? Yes. Who, who is the owner and setter of the law? Huh? Who sets the law? God of faith. Okay, God, right. So who has the right to make exceptions in that law for so certain what people? Saying is God can be unjust whenever he no, wants. he is being just. In fact, he's explicitly calling out the behavior, so condemning be the behavior, and biased. saying there will be consequences based off it. So God can be biased, yeah? For David, one law, for the rest of the law. It's like the king. Yeah? Wait, 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 wait. You want to do that? Okay, in, in, Isla in Islam, the, uh, Muhammad, as the prophet, has the right to have as, uh, as many wives as he wants to. Because he's just said that God can't be biased towards certain prophets. Okay, According to you, Muhammad did have special. There you are. So you have to go hide behind Islam. Come on, to answer my question. No, my point is, is that you. I can, I can answer yes, but that on my own way. Don't, I'm don't refute my religion by destroying you your religion. So you are agreeing with it that God can be biased. God has the right to apply His justice and mercy as He sees fit. So how is justice, brother? Right. The David committed adultery, but his wives have to sleep with the neighbor. How does? No, no, no. It's, it's not as if it have to, but rather that God knew that the free consequence. Listen, 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 listen. The consequence of this. Yeah, Chris, would lead to people naturally coming Chris, into it. In the, in the context, in the context, what it says here is, for you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before Israel, before the sun. Yeah. So what God is saying is, are you saying that the wives have to sleep with Israel? What God well, is he saying? Decided, he made a decision. Is that, is that a different God? Listen to, listen to what the scripture yeah. says. He says, he says behold, he I will raise up adversity against you from yeah. your own house. Yes. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. Yes. As a consequence, for David sinning against God, don't forget he repented of that. David repented of God and said what he had done. I'll read it to you now, but I don't want to lose my train of thought here. He did not say he repented. No, no, he did repent. There's another place. He did. He repented. His son died as well, and he repented, but his son died as well. Exactly. So what the context of this is, is God is punishing him this way, and God is telling him the future. You see, it goes into it goes into 2 Samuel chapter 7, the Davidic covenant. God made a covenant with David. And the covenant is for the Messiah to come. So that's the question I want to ask you, which leads into chapter 12. Because in, cha in chapter 7, what's happened is, if you take this in, um, in, in, in chronological order, it says, I will set up a seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. So God is going to have a son through David. He, does, he says, when you're David, yeah, yeah, Solomon, I'm talking about Solomon. Well, yeah. well, no, 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 no. It's another no, world no, no, thing. No. You know? I'm talking about Jesus God, here. No, no, it well, can only be Jesus. How can it be Solomon? Solomon built the temple. Okay, is Solomon Didn't still, the is is Solomon still reigning? Is Solomon still reigning now, today? Uh, no, he's not. Okay, well listen to this. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 
Solomon's not reigning today. I think, I think it's Jesus a, is reigning. I think it's hyperbole speaking. No, no. Forever no, hyperbole. Doesn't, this for, is literal. It changes it's now. You ask forever. if we take it. I tell you why it's hyperbole. Because when, when, the, when the God gave covenant to Abraham, the covenant of circumcision, he said, my covenant with you and your descendants will be forever. But well, you yeah. don't believe it's forever. We do. So God, we do believe he's Christian either. circumcised. Well, of course, because Abraham died Christian without saying, Abraham died without seeing the, 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 the covenant oh, fulfilled. But you don't circumcise. No, Paul, we don't Paul circumcise. You don't do no, circumcise. Circumcision of the heart. heart. And the, exactly. But, but the covenant of God was circumcision of broken. the body. No, yeah. where does it yeah, say yeah, that? It was at that time. Yeah. We've got no, a new no, covenant. That covenant yeah, will be you're, forever. You're going off subject. I'm trying no, to get no, we're not going forever. I'm trying so to get. I'm saying this wait, is also wait, forever. Wait, let me say. I probably speak in all subjects. It is twelve. We are forever. asking if Solomon God, Kingdom probably lasts for quite saying, a long time. You are yeah. saying to me, why does God take His wives yeah. and take His wives off? Yeah. If we're skiing now, let's stay on this slope and let's not go off piece, okay? I'm trying to say to you that God made a covenant with David. Yes. God can't lie, and God, if God says something's going to happen in the future, it's already got questions. Of course, I agree. Second, second. Got questions. Got questions. Listen, there's the same question. Why did God put his David on the face of his arse? It's going to happen. Wow. So if he says there's going to be false prophets and false teachers, so brother, your name is Greg. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I appreciate okay. this conversation. So what I'm saying to you, if God's made a covenant with David, and He said, when your days are fulfilled, then you rest with your fathers. David's dead. He's making a covenant. He's saying, my son, not your son. He's, God is saying, my son. God's making a covenant with David, can not I, with Solomon. Can I say something about it? No, no. Let's say for the sake of argument. Let me finish my point. You are you're concerned. Chris is, Chris is saying to you, God can harden Pharaoh's heart, and Pharaoh can harden his own heart. All the way through the Old Testament, and we have an explanation the Jews for that. hardened their hearts yep. against God. Yep. They rebelled against God. They sinned. He didn't punish them there and then. He told them, if you do this thing, if you don't love me, and you don't worship me, and you don't make me number one, you will not see the promised land. They didn't see the promised land. All those Jews didn't see the promised land. Their children saw the promised land. Mm. So I, I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this debate. Well, well, no, but the, there's the answer to your question. And also, if God's made a covenant, my yeah. he can't break the covenant. Why David was not punished. Okay. Let's say for the sake of argument, God forgive David, he accepts his repentance. Okay, you're not going to be punished. Fine, fine. God can do that. He can forgive whoever wants. But what his wife has to do with it? Why is well, wife no, no, no. That was has the, to go and sleep with the neighbor? And he, he, yep. God's not making the wife go and sleep with the neighbor. No, he's not. God's no, doing no, 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 no. Because why, why, would you yeah, why would you reject that? Why not take an even more literal interpretation and think that God's going to physically pick him up and move them? Why? Why are you taking? Yeah, but why were you rejecting? Yeah, yeah, but happen. my point. My point is, is why? Well, listen, 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 yeah. listen, listen, yeah. listen. No, he's not predicted. Ah, see, see, see why? Why were you doing that? I will do it. Yeah. Wait, wait. Okay, okay so, okay, so God is going to pick him up then. God would have said, if this will happen. Wait, wait. What you did, this will happen. Then I can take wait, that. But again, you're picking a particular interpretation. I will do it. Listen, listen. There are three possible ways. There are three possible ways. When he says he does it, either he physically picks them up and makes them do it. We both reject that. I, you then say that the other way is that he actually makes it in such a way that it's determined to happen. That's your position. The third one is that God knows that based off free decisions, they will inevitably do that. My point is, is why are you rejecting uh, the other two interpretations and just picking your one? No, just and then, taking, but then I'm you're then you're saying literal. that I'm being I'm no, because the literal, it, the literal, is, yeah, yeah. In this case, then the literal, no. no, no. I'm picking, I'm gonna but that is the literal. And, and that is the literal. The the, if no, if, no, if, no, if I said to you, if I said to you, I'm going to make people commit adultery. You would think that I would literally go up to them and be like, right, come here then, let's grab you, let's put you over here. But that's obviously the wrong interpretation. What we're saying is but that you, is God's will. That's what we're saying. No, no he we says, are saying that, no, no, we are, it's not God's will. Not listen, God's listen, will. God never says he desires that to happen. He says that he knows it will happen and he will allow in his providence the, that to occur because he uh, gives agency to few, uh, human beings. God has done many now times. that takes into account Exodus, it takes into account Samuel, and we have a holistic interpretation. Yours, however, doesn't. Also, by the way, in the Quran, to bring it back, it's worth mentioning that there are cases in which uh, you back stories of which um, there isn't any necessary uh, case where it's clear that certain people have done wrong things and yet they bear the uh, punishment for others. So, for example, you have the story of Noah, yes? Now, unless you could tell me in the Quran where it specifically says these people did certain things wrong and therefore that's why they were punished, you would have to accept that either it, that's just not mentioned or that God has killed people who didn't deserve it. You mean all those people died in the flood? Yeah, so you could say, yeah, in Noah, yeah? And you also have Solomon and Gomorrah, similar story, right? 
So in our religions, we both have the understanding that God has the wisdom and the authority to choose how he applies mercy and justice. And given that we are all sinful beings, we are here. all in des uh, deserving of justice uh, and mercy There's to be upon us. Here. When the floods came, the law of innocent people, children probably died as well. But all right, so why do you have a problem with that? Second, Did God not do that? Well, for sure, all the guilty ones died as well. Sure. Oh yeah. Yep. Here, the guilty parties, David and Bathsheba, yep. nothing happened to them. Mm -hmm. he, he lived for very well forever. What do you think he, should have happened he, he, with he, he, Sorry? What do you think should have happened with David? What, what should have happened was David and Bathsheba should be stoned to death. Okay. Now he's, you say he made the covenant with and them. And what do you think should have happened with the wives? So David and Bathsheba were stoned, they killed, yeah. in your mind. And what should have happened they with their the wives? Life. They lived their lives with David. With, with who looking after them? No, if they, they want to marry someone, they, they, they so, can get married. So what God says to David, I will raise up adversity. The first thing he does, within your own house, I will raise up adversity. So God raised up the adversity so he can change people's minds. God can change a whole nation's minds. He can point them towards it. But sometimes he does that. Sometimes it gives you freedom of choice. So you agree the first part, he said, I will raise adversity. God raises yeah, up adversity. Okay. So you agree that as God raises adversity. And then he says, But then he said, I will. Yes, he does. Take your wife. He does but say he said he did it. But listen, you're saying that's God's will. Now I'm saying to you, God's will was for David not to sleep with Bathsheba, for David to do what he was supposed to do. And we and don't God's believe David did. We Muslims don't believe David did. No hadith, no Quran says David ever committed adultery. We don't believe that. We don't but believe the Prophet fine, of God would have committed adultery like that. Yes, but Muhammad okay. himself did things that are much more worse, in my view. Okay, yeah, you know, can we I'll bring it up, we'll bring it up. Yeah. And let's go back to um, Aisha being Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So, okay. Okay. We sure. Agree to can I just say here? something to you I'll before you before part, you have yeah. that conversation? Yeah. I'm genuinely interested in hearing what you've got to say about I'm not here because... About Aisha? I, I, I'm, I'm here to listen to what yeah, you yeah, say sure. about Aisha and I'll tell sure. you why I'm sure. interested. I will become a Muslim today. If you can get me to be so logical about Aisha. No, about, about, about Islam. Islam. If, if Islam has got the succession of the prophets, then I'm going to run to Islam. But if, why, if it has, why would you say that? Because. Because, because if you know the Christianity is true, you should believe that. I do know Christianity is true. Yeah, so you should say that. But if Christianity is true, there's no other option. But what I say Islam is true. So it doesn't matter how good you think of Christianity. I think I'll say it's very Unless if I have a doubt in my Islam, then I will say that. I'm just saying that, brother. Very nice yeah. of you to say that. No, very humble of you to say that. What I'm trying to say to you is in conversations, it's a yeah. story. It seems preconceptions yeah. lead the conversation, yeah, no, no. not actual conversations. So, you know, if you, you shock me, you show me something in the Bible that I've never seen, and it said Jesus married a nine year old, or Jesus had sex with a nine year old, I would, I, I would question that. And that's why I'm listening. I'll, I'll answer the question Thank because you. I have a little bit of belief that Muhammad uh, Sassan slept with a nine year old, and I have my good reasons for that. Can I ask a real question? So, uh, this is my understanding, and I want you to, to jump in where any of this is wrong. Uh, the idea that between 9 or 11 wives, depending on the sources, uh, he actually was engaged to other people as well, but he never, met, uh, for some reason, they never put you out of the marriage. Yes? No, I, I don't know. So, I don't know. Maybe in Tafsir or some other. Uh, yeah. Do you accept Tafsir? Look, my criteria is Quran and Sunnah. Only. Tafsir. Anything goes against Quran and Sunnah, Tafsir. Or any okay. so, so, so my worry, criteria is this very strict criteria. Right, my worry is some of the most well-established narrations about Muhammad are the ones that talk about Aisha's age. My understanding from Scott, from Islamic scholars, I mean there are Islamic scholars that I've heard, Yasser Qadi is one for example, that somebody says, look guys, you just need to accept this. Uh, this is in our sunnah. Like, move on. Yeah? And I've seen debates where Muslims argue for this. Yeah? Um, I don't think the case can be made very convincingly that the opposite is true, that he didn't sleep with the nine year old I open the floor to you. To okay. hear. Look, there, there are these scholars of the past. One, among them, one was called Ibn Salah. A thousand years ago, he wrote the book of Hadith, Muqaddama Ibn Salah, one of the sciences of Hadith, which he described the science of Hadith. And Khatib al Baghdadi also, he was a big Mahathis as well. He also described how we determine which hadith is authentic or not. And they derive five, five principles. And among them, one principle is there should not be any hidden defect in the hadith. They also say that they should not go against akal, against, against common sense. They also derive that, that principle as well. Should not go against Quran, 
should not go against Sunnah, should not be something which should be known by public common, but coming from one person. It doesn't make sense. Something should be very common, but coming from one person. So they derive these principles. So according to those principles, these are these what you say in Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, apart from the Sai, all five books have them. There were 13 of them, and I read them very closely. But if you see, those are these are not Motuwata. You know what Motuwata means? Yeah, multiple attestation. It comes from at least four people. Okay. Out of 13, 11 come from one person, Aisha. Another person called Abdullah. We don't know which Abdullah. Abdullah bin Abbas, Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah bin uh, Masood. Just say Abdullah, which means slave of God. We don't know. Another one comes from one woman. The point here is, this is first of all, this is akhbar e ahad It's not mutawatir hadith. When something is not mutawatir, you have to be very careful. Secondly, the narrator of this hadith, majority of them, is Ibn Hisham. Ibn Hisham was the son of Urwa, who was a nephew of Aisha. He said, Aisha says that, Urwa says that, and Hisham says, Urwa says that. Okay? Abu Salam? No, no, no. Okay. So, so Ibn Salam. So, Ibn Hisham, who was Ibn Hisham? We need to know from him, eight of his students narrating this hadith. So, up to Aisha is one. Urwa is one, Hisham is one, single, 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 there are suddenly many people. Now Hisham, he lived up to the age of 80. 70 years he lived in Medina. One of his, one of the greatest students of all is Imam Malik. You heard of the name Imam Malik? Yeah. He was his one of the best students. And he is the first person who write the book of Hadith, Mota Malik. That, his student never quote this Hadith. There is nowhere you find Imam Malik ever mention that Hadith. Now this is the Hisham, this is a very important point, please try to understand. Hisham lived 70 years in Medina. He had many students, he was a big, big Imam. None of his students from Medina ever quote this Hadith. That's a very important point to be noted. All his students, the last 10 years of his life he lived in Iraq, all students are from Iraq quoted this Hadith. So many people say that Ibn Hisham has many different reasons why he quoted this. First of all, he lost his memory when he, in the olden age. You find many proofs that people don't take his hadith anymore when he moved to Iraq because he got old, so he lost his memory. Some people say he's supposed to say 16, Sittatul Ashar, but he dropped Ashar, it means 10, 10, he dropped. Like we said, 22. 22. Two words, yeah? In Arabic, we say 6 and 10. Sittatul Ashar. So people say he dropped Ashar because of his memory. He's supposed to say 16, but he says 6. This is one of the, one of the reasons. But there's, there's, there's other more reasons. Well, the point here is, Can I address those? why none of yep. the students from Medina ever quote this hadith? Okay, okay, so first of all, there are a few arguments here, so let's address them one by one. One I want to address immediately is that you say that uh, is it Ibn Malik? What was his name? Uh, Imam Malik. Imam Malik. So they made no reference to this particular hadith. Yes. Now I want to be careful here, that's an argument from silence. If other people did reference it, the fact that he didn't reference it doesn't really mean much. For all we know, he could have just not heard it. There's a simple explanation as to why that could have been the case. Never heard of but, but, my, but my point is, is that there are other people of whom are trusted, who are accepted as part of the Sunnah, given reliable Sunnah, who narrated it, right? So the other question is, did you say, well, hang on a second, it's possible that when they wrote down the number six, really it meant to be 16. Okay, so first of all, that's hype, that's, uh, that's, okay. Well, right, that's speculation, but remember, there are multiple hadith here. There are hadith that talk about when she was uh, betrothed to be married at the age of six, and there are hadith, again, from the same books, where she actually was consummated the marriage at the age of nine. So you would need to give an account for both the six and the nine. The other problem is, is there are many different ways, and I've seen them, and I've seen Muslims try to explain this to me, where you can take account of different events, and you can say based off, uh, I think it's Hafsa and her age, and or this particular battle, or this time yeah, yeah, yeah. after after Maj Majlal. Uh, right, right, right. right. Oh, okay. You could take these, and then you can, can use them to give reasons to believe that actually she was a different age. The problems with this is each different metric you use produces different results. In other words, if you take this battle and you assume this, then she should be this age. If you take what she says at this point, then she should be this age. In other words, you're producing different hypotheses, each of which contradict each other. So now you end up with Aisha was nine, or maybe she was 16, or maybe she was 20 something, or maybe she was, and you have no reason to believe any of them. And you were effectively down. Okay, okay, but I'm aware that they exist. Right, I'm aware that they exist. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right, right. But my understanding is this. Okay. My understanding is this. From the way that scholars understand the Sunnah, they would say that Sahih Bukhari is authentic. 
and it's part of the Sunnah to follow. And they would say the same about the six different authentic books. Yep. My understanding is this. If you want to say that narrations that are repeated by different authors of different books, all of them of which you're saying cannot be correct, cannot be authentic, I would argue that therefore you've just given a very good argument that all of the things that are in those books that are graded Sahih may not actually be authentic at all. In fact, in fact are you saying they are completely wrong? Are you saying they're just not authentic? Okay, let me pick you on right. that point when you yep. say Bukhari. Scholars yep. say Bukhari is authentic. Yeah. I know many scholars say that. Everything in Bukhari is authentic. Yes. Scholars say that. All of it is graded yeah. as authentic. And Muslim as well. Muslim yes, Muslim Muslim Sahih Al-Bukhari is Sahih yeah, Muslim. Right. Yeah. So when I, if I show you and yeah. I show them Muslims as well, there are contradictions among them. Yeah. Bukhari contradicts Bukhari. I agree Bukhari with that. Muslim. Thank you for saying yeah. that. I so completely I agree. So how they say this is all authentic when there's a contradiction? So that claim because that Islam Bukhari is wrong. Is, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but, but you no, understand, no, you understand no, my point. No, no, yeah. No, no. yeah. Islam is not Bukhari. Bukhari is not Islam. But, no, 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 but, but, but it's Sunnah. Did not authorize Sahih Bukhari. Do you know that? Who, who? Prophet didn't authorize Sahih Bukhari. Absolutely, because Sahih authorize. Bukhari comes so, hundred years right, later. Exactly. Right. So what we believe is, I believe in Quran and Sunnah. When I say Sunnah, Sunnah al-Mutawatir. Sunnah is the tradition of the Prophet. It comes from generation to generation to generation. For example. Five prayers, no mention in the Quran. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's in the Bukhari and yep, yep. So Are you saying that when Bukhari wrote 250 years later that there are five prayers? For 250 years, Muslims didn't know how many prayers there were. Exactly. No, they were. They didn't knew that. So what I'm saying, Bukhari only wrote what was happening, whatever he found out. Otherwise, you should be saying Muslims are doing three salah, and suddenly Bukhari said five. He said, "Oh, so thank you very much." For 250 years, we didn't know that. Right. There were five salah, but you're making an argument. Five Sorry. So I'm saying mm. the hadith can be right and can be wrong and we must wait wait you just made a good reason for why they're right you just made a good reason for the authenticity of it you just said look you don't you don't think they were not praying five times for that period just likewise you don't think that they all thought that uh, muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old from then and he's just saying what he's heard you've just argued for my point because, because you've just said you, i'm saying that sahih al-bukhari said this and it's repeated in other books as well so there must have been an understanding that that was the case you just made that argument for me by saying, likewise, there must have been an understanding before this, going back to the time of the Prophet, that you pray five times a day. And it's just written in the, in the hadith. Okay. So and Muslim, therefore it's correct. So Muslims are praying five times since the age to today. Are Muslims, Muslims are marrying six and nine years old in the world? If you find maybe here in their case, it's, it's not a common practice. Muslims wait, don't do coming. that. Wait, 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 wait. Muslims okay. don't do that. What, child Muslims marriage? Muslims don't have sex with nine, nine, nine Wait, wait, wait back then, back is then. It, is it common? Back then, or are you talking about now? No, what well, I'm saying if yeah. it's something coming from generation, generation to generation, yeah. five prayers, like five prayers, yeah. Muslims are not doing sex with the children. They are not. You find well, no, but they, they, they know, know the story that their prophet did. Because you're saying, look, if, if it's understood by the Ummah that you pray five times a day and this goes back to the Prophet, exactly. then surely it's understood by the Ummah yeah, that Muhammad has sex with a nine-year-old because... Yeah. Yeah. Sunnah yeah. is something living practice. Right. So uh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Uh, no. Yeah, but people are not marrying children for generation. But the Tafsir says it's prohibited because of the Quran. Uh, Surah Al-Talaq, Ayah 4, makes it clear that it is uh, permissible, sorry, that you can indeed marry prepubescent children. That's so Al-Talaq, like Ayah 4. Yes. Are you, are you aware? Sure uh, um, yes, I am. Yes. No, no. And the reason I... The Quran says that. Yes. Quran say marrying, uh, you can Those who have not children. menstruated. Right. I'm quoting there. The English translation, obviously, I'm quoting. Do you know what that means? Yes, those who have not menstruated. Do you know that words talk about Nisa? About Nisa? Oh, it's in women. Is women, it? yeah. No, no, women. Right. Okay, so here's, here's the point. If that is true, which is an argument, yeah. and many people say I shouldn't grant that argument, but I will grant it. No, no. What, what I mean is this. If that's that. true, all you've demonstrated is that Islam considers a nine year old girl a woman. No. That is a very dangerous thing to assume. Do you understand that? I'll tell you why. Okay, why, why, why did you say that? Actually, Islam because a nine-year-old is a woman. Why do you say that? What? What is that? Because it, it's through the uh, the example of the Prophet, according to Hadiths. It's also because the Quran and Atalak. Okay, sixty-five. Example. Sixty-five says uh, that the Ida period that you have to wait. Yes. It's not clarified in certain situations, right? I think it's Surah two 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 two. I think that talks about the general Ida. The general Ida is uh, is it two monthly cycles? I think three. Three months. Sorry, three, three monthly cycles. But then people were asking Muhammad, but what about those who don't have monthly periods, right? And those examples were those who are pregnant, those who are too old, they've had menopause, they don't have menstruate anymore, and those who have not menstruated. Is that in the Hadith? That's in the Quran. That's in the Quran? That's Surah 65 by 4. Uh, no, no, yeah. Exactly. Okay, the, the no, explanation, uh, uh, actually, even the explanation is, I think. Let me read this. Oh, right, let's read it, let's read it for you. Let yeah, yeah. Read let's read it, yeah. Because most of the people misinterpret this verse 65. Day. You understand that other Muslims have confirmed this for me, yeah? I just yeah, want to make that clear. Yeah, 
yeah, we, yeah, if, if, yeah. And well before that, I confronted him on that as well. And he said, because there are a lot of Christians watching, let's not talk about it. And, it's because, oh. and uh, he's, he's, he's totally wrong on that, obviously. I'll tell you what he says. 65 4 says this. Such of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them the prescribed period, if we have any doubt, is three months. Yeah. And for those who have no courses, for those yep. who carry their period in until they deliver yep. their burdens. Actually, the, no courses is not the right. It says Where? we did not have courses. Well, it's my translation here. It just says have not menstruated. Who have not yeah, menstruated. Yeah, 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 I agree with you. No, right, so no, who, who, who's that no, describing? Right, exactly. Right. It's describing, first of all, women. Yes. And I, are there, okay. Are there I don't any, think they're any women, women yep. who has a problem of menstruation? Yes. And you find there are women who are who are suffering from absence of menstrual cycles. They okay. Are. Okay. And there are sometimes women up to the age of 25. They have no menstrual cycle. Should, should so you? One second, one second. Let me, right. let me make a right. point. Quran, first of all, is talking about women. Then he's describing, this talking about idda. Idda means, are they pregnant or not? So any child who's six or seven or eight, who never had period, can you imagine they can be pregnant? They can't be pregnant. You have to be pregnant, you have to have a period first, first period, then you can have a chance to be pregnant. Now, if you see the difference between that child who never have a period, they can never get pregnant until their first period. But there are those women who are above 15 or 16, who have absence of menstrual cycle, they have from 15 to 25 percent chances to get pregnant because they, they, are, they are late, but they have chances to get pregnant and they are women. You check it for yourself. Those women who have absence of menstrual cycle, can they get pregnant? They say, science says yes, 15 to 25 percent chance they can. So point here is, talking about Idda, a child who never have a period, how can that be pregnant? It doesn't make any sense. Secondly, let's talk about women. And there are women who are above, above the age, but they do not have menstrual okay. cycles. Okay. So this is my point here. Thank I you very much. Thank you very much. Right. That, was, that was great. Okay, so there are, there are multiple problems with this. First of all, what is... Uh, What's your name again, sorry? Abbas. Abbas. What Abbas is saying here is that it never explicitly says children and therefore when it says those who have not yet menstruated or have not menstruated or have had no courses, it could be talking about, or in his view, I'm it sorry, is I talking about. Oh, you I said, said it is. They are, okay, yeah. Yeah. He's saying it is. It is talking about those who are older, who have, n have for medical reasons have not yet gone through puberty. Now I want to make this clear. That is a problem still for you. And the reason why is this. According to Islam then, it is permissible to have sex with those who have not gone through puberty who are 15, 16, 17 or 18. They're physically ready. No, they're not. If they haven't gone through puberty, they're definitely not. If you haven't gone through puberty, your hips haven't widened. No, but you, that's you, not a pregnancy. You, no, no, but you can still have sex. But you're having sex with them. If you are 16 or 18 or 20. Come on, remember, the, the, con the, con the context of this is the inner period that you wait to ensure no questions of a pregnancy. So when they're talking about this, they're obviously in the context of those who can be pregnant. The easier and more common sense implement uh, explanation of this is simply that they didn't know that having sex with a nine-year-old might not necessarily lead to pregnancy. Perhaps there are some very rare cases where that did happen. You understand how they can flip that narrative onto you and all of a sudden you have to defend the fact that so maybe it could. So you so ignorant at that time, they did not know that uh, be before period you can be pregnant. Well, would, well. They have, would they have known exactly what point you could have got pregnant at? I think it's reasonable to say maybe they didn't. So maybe they were giving these answers to account for all explanations. In other words, there were people who were having sex with uh, what I would consider children who have not reached puberty and they were making sure they were accounted for in case they did get pregnant because they did not know. Now, I agree with you that y your understanding could be an addition. It could also be the case that Surah al talaq at Ayah 4 could actually be talking about those who actually have that, uh, that health problem. I grant that that can be true because I think the verse allows for that. But it, under the same spirit, you would have to allow that this can also be talking about those who have not reached their courses because they are not old enough yet. You know why it can't be? Because you've my first point. It's talking about Nisa. Nisa means women. Yeah? The female, people say no, it means female. No. Female, the word Arabic is Unsa. Unsa means female. Nisa means uh, uh, women. And I can show you some. But, but you need to understand. Just interrupt yeah. Go on. Ask a question. Yeah. If, if I'm hearing what you're saying, are you saying that if Muhammad had slept with Aisha when she was nine, if that was the case, 
they could discuss you. I said it many times. Yes, 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 yes. No yes. man of God can have a sex with a child. I agree. No man of God, no decent man can have a God. And I say to those Muslim brothers and sisters, if you believe your prophet have a sex with nine year old, seriously, you are lying on his on his part. It's a blatant lie on him. It's a bit coma. You should you should, you should uh, repent to God. How can a man of God you can imagine do that? So, so I don't believe that. So, uh, so it can ever happen. I and I approach honesty. Names. I won't make any names, but there are people that have had arguments with, with him. Yeah. And, and I myself. Shamsi. Some of Muslims that don't like me here. Wow. How can you say that? Okay. But I'm saying that I have my reasons for that as well. Okay. And our, our Prophet peace be upon him said, and this is a mutawatir hadith, there's a reason why he said that. He said, anybody who lie on my behalf, deliberately, his place is in hellfire. He warned us, be very careful to say anything about me. And I said, these are the one of the things, these are blatant lies on his part. And oh, I my can friend. never accept that, but I have a reason. I'm not denying it because I don't like it. Uh, I, I have the reasons to deny you see, it. I think you're too hadith. decent. I think you're too decent of a man to accept it. I think that's yeah. that's why. In all honesty, if I'm being honest, <laughs> I, and I, I do want to say, remember, I say that, but I, I believe you want to know, That's fine. I believe it's the problem. Yeah. I think what Chris is saying, if you substituted the name Muhammad in those hadiths, and you substituted the name John the Baptist into the name Muhammad, um, I wonder if you coming to us with the name John the Baptist and all those hadiths and all the commentaries on the Bible. I wonder if you would come to us and we reverse the debates and we 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 use your argument that you've just used um, against you. I wonder if you would go, you guys have got a leg to stand on because I'm trying my hardest to understand you. I'm getting there. I'm, I, I think I'm getting there. What I'm, what I'm Astonished that is how honest you are, and I know that God works. My, my Quran teaches me to be truth. Yeah, absolutely. Truth comes and falls to perish, or by nature falls to perish. Yeah. I believe in the truth. If you believe in the truth, yeah. in Surah 843, where it says that Allah lied to Muhammad about that, that battle, and He said, if I told you the truth, you would have, you would have. Um, you, you wouldn't have gone to the battle because they were many in number and you were few. Didn't Allah deceive Muhammad? Really Allah lie? I mean, if you want to open it up, let's, let's well, see what it says. I would say we stick on the... Well, okay. you can go, you can go on, but it's up to you. The only reason I want to say is, um, there is also, if I understand the Quran, a verse that says that if you doubt anything of the Prophet, then you are not a Muslim, you're kafir. Is that correct? The Quran says that if you doubt, you're, you're a kafir. The word kafir used there, I, mean, oh, I don't know what the Arabic is. We have to read the context, bro. Okay. Okay. But my context. point is, my point Maybe is, there was a battle taking place. Yeah. The Muslims say, no, no, we're not going to go with you. You go by yourself. Such a serious circumstances. Then, if you reject him, then, then maybe you're a kafir. Then, what's the point of being Muslim? So we need to read the word context here. So I agree. I absolutely memorize. agree. But I also want to look at the earlier sources to see how Muslims looked at it. And the problem is, is I know you don't accept tafsir, but I can go through lists and lists of tafsir yeah, 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 that all agree with my Maududi. interpretation. Uh, Maududi has the Maud Maududi, Maududi, yeah, Maududi, Maududi is the word. Maududi has both interpretations. He yeah, said, yeah, yeah, he says, um, because of the disease. And, oh, uh, uh, go on, go on. Because of the age, he said, could have been their disease, they have late menstrual, or they could be child. Maududi yeah, yeah, said, Maududi, Maududi says, and remember, anything that the Prophet says, we, we are not to uh, question. Yes, yeah, he says Maududi, uh, literally in that same bit, yeah, the next paragraph. Maududi is the most explicit. But we need to find yeah. out, like, mm. But Ibn Abbas analyzed, says here. As I told yeah, you, Ibn yeah. Salah and Khadib al-Baghdadi, mm. the great scholars of Hadith, thousand years ago they lived, they didn't accept every Hadith. For example, Bukhari. Didn't he reject many Hadith? They say Bukhari had 300,000 Hadith. You have I know, yeah, he threw a lot away. And he threw a lot. Meaning yeah. what? He reject many Hadith. And there's a, it's a, one yeah. second, one point I want to make. Imam, talking about Hadith here, authenticity of Hadith. Imam, Muslim, when he say why he's writing the Hadith, read his uh, introduction. He said, because there are so many people are lying about the Prophet, I am obliged to write something about it. And he brings one hadith of Ibn Masood. Ibn Masood says that, the There was a time when people used to say, Kala Rasulullah, Prophet said that. And we used to run to hear that. But since people have started fabricating hadith, anybody say, Kala Rasulullah, we don't go unless we know that person. Meaning people from the very beginning are making up our hadith. I like about hadith, hadith and scholars are rejecting. I'm not doing anything different. Uh, Abbas, can I ask one question? I'm just predicting and analyzing further. That's fine. Abbas, um, is it fair to say that then in Sahih Bukhari, at least one or however ones that are relevant to this topic, those hadiths have been corrupted? Uh, just, just the ones related hidden, to what I should be... I would say hidden defect in them. 
That sounds like corruption then. Okay, so, so Sahib Bakari has some corruption in it. Okay, that's fine. Fine, that's fine. Okay, so, so other people ask, not Aisha, that's fine. So, but, so Sahih al-Bukhari contains some corruption in it? Of course. Okay, is Sahih al-Bukhari part of the Sunnah? No. Sahih al-Bukhari is not part of the Sunnah? No. I tell you what. If you reject the Sunnah, are you still Muslim? No, no, no. no. Okay. Sunnah is in the Hadith. Yes. But not every Hadith is Sunnah. There's right. a difference here. Right, but are, are, are my understanding... Sunnah is in the Hadith. He makes that decision. No, but Sunnah is the, the practice of the Prophet Whatever he did, whatever he said. Yeah, well, that's a yeah, but they have to accept the authentic, trusted had, uh, hadith and narrations, which is why you accept the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah, but my point is, that if you say that actually the most accepted, the literal most accepted, has corruption in it, you are you're saying the Sunnah is corrupted. Sir, I'm not saying that. You are, no, you, only, you are literally. Only me saying that. Scholars yeah. said that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's in I, the, I'm not going to argue about that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the one who died in 1990s, big hadith scholar. I don't know, I, I probably won't know. Did that, you? No. Oh, not just that, no, 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 not just that. No. In the 1990s, did you have any Muslims say to you on the park? Sheikh Albani. Um, only to get out of this argument. Sheikh Albani, Sheikh Albani, great scholar, you must have heard his Wait, name. Wait, Albani? Uh, is he not the one who does the grading for the... He rejects many hadiths from Muslim and Bukhari. When I look at hadith, it says like, Sahih, and then it says in brackets, Al, Al Albani. Is, yeah, that, is yeah. that the same? Yeah, oh, yeah but many of them yeah. he rejects as well. Well, I'm saying that he's right. a great scholar of hadith, and he says many of the Bukhari hadiths are not authentic. Can I find ones that are about Aisha that say Albani? No, no, no. Listen to me what I'm saying. Okay, there. Yeah. I'm saying that scholars have rejected it. Wait, 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 I'm but, not but, saying that Albani is 100% right, what I'm saying he's a great scholar, mm. but, but he even rejects Bukhari and Muslim. So it's possible that you can re reject Bukhari and Muslim as well. I don't know how you could be a Muslim and do that. Because every Muslim says you have to affirm the Quran and the Sunnah. And I don't understand how you could take the most authentic parts of the Sunnah and say this problem is wrong. Every hadith is not Sunnah. Sunnah. Yeah, yeah, but only those every that have been... Sunnah is in the hadith, but not every hadith is Sunnah. Okay, but, but the, the superlative form of hadith. The problem is, is hadith okay. Is under, so can you tell me hadiths that are more authentic and more trusted than Al Bukhari? There is. Bukhari is the most authentic. But okay, most authentic so, okay. doesn't mean hundred percent correct. So it's still corrupt in Quran, some way, a little bit, just a little Quran bit. Quran is hundred percent correct. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll let that slide. I'll let that slide. And I'm but, saying that right. If, if any hadith does not yep. uh, apply the the, you uh, said the, the principles. Akul, I, I, Akal, akal no. but, but where, where is that necessarily accepted by all madhabs that you, that you can use that? Is she, that? Shias don't accept that. Okay, it, but do all madhabs accept that? Uh, well, actually, well, Salafis accept that. I think Imam Abu Hanifa doesn't accept all Bukhari. Imam Abu Hanifa and Hanafi people, sorry, not sorry, Imam, sorry, Hanafi people, because Bukhari says something against Imam Abu Hanifa. So Hanafis don't respect Bukhari totally. Not all. But, on, but in this hadith they do. So what I'm saying is that many madhab, they don't accept Bukhari 100%. This is a misconception. They all madhab accept Bukhari. I don't understand how you can reject parts of the most authentic, trusted book historically that claims to go back to the time of Muhammad, truth, uh, true narrations, Asahi, and you say, I'm not going to accept it. That to me sounds like you're rejected the Sunnah. Because I read a very simple thing in a, in a hadith, Bukhari and Muslim. How old was Prophet when he died? Uh, yeah. 50, uh, was it 60? No, 63. 60, okay. Two of these say 63, one of these say 60, one of these say 65. And they're all in Bukhari and Muslim. Can they all be right? I would agree with you that they can't be. Exactly. I, I absolutely so agree. Any Muslim say that, yeah. how can you reject Bukhari and Muslim? I ask them a question. If there's a contradiction, how they all can be right? One is right, I agree. others wrong. But the so they, 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 the argument goes, under the car, I agree. Whatever. But you need to understand this is the this is the contention within Islam, I find. Where in order to resolve these things, you have to use reason. You have to use kalam. You have to. Uh, do, do you think kalam is uh, acceptable? As in reasoning, the Islamic science, Islamic philosophy. I, I can't, I can't answer that. I haven't read that thing, so yeah, that's not my field. I'm not going to answer that. But my point is this: so I'm saying that if I find contradiction in the hadith, I mean hadith hundred percent right, and that's that's the argument. Do you, do you think? Do you think someone? Came Quran, in? Quran is hundred percent right. Quran is hundred percent right. Without any doubt. So, do you think if someone came into this conversation, that it would sound like you're picking and choosing? 
parts, parts of what you, you think are right or you think are wrong. I am a truth seeker. I take truth wherever I find. I just realized. You I reject uh, false wherever, wherever there is. So if, I found, if I found falsehood in any hadith or any tafsir, I reject it. And what my criteria? This is why you should reject it. If you find some falsehood, you mark the other falsehood. If you find God can't lie. So why would God allow in the Bible, that says on many occasions, Old Testament, New Testament, God cannot lie. So if you've got a misrepresentation of God lying, then, then there's something major wrong. So, and those people who are leaders among you. But what is there after that? Find tanazatu for the in Allah Rasul. But if you disagree among yourself, come back to Allah's Messenger. So Allah has given me right to disagree whoever I want, but I cannot disagree with Allah and His Messenger. So no matter how big scholar you are, Allah is giving me this authority. I, but I have to have a good reason. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. I can't be just good reason. I don't like you. So I have to have a good reason. If those hadiths are true, then you do put into your religion and accept the Muhammad as Any man living with a nine year old cannot be a prophet of God. Yeah, yeah, I, agree, I agree with that. And my prophet did not. That's a blatant lie on him. A big percent of Muslims, like 10, 15 percent Shias, they never accept that. They said this is a lie. And they either told you that he did for example. Aisha, but why Abu Bakr never mentioned anything about my, my daughter get married when she was six? Why why the servants of Muhammad Sazam who were in his house? Anas bin Malik had many hadith. He never mentioned that. Why Osama bin Zed never mentioned that? Why none of his wives ever mentioned that? Why Umar never mentioned that? Why even Abu Huraira never mentioned that? No, no, what I'm saying is Aisha didn't lie. No, what I'm saying is that somebody used the name of Aisha. Who used? Hisham. And there was one another plausible There's argument. There's many hadith narrated by Hisham. There's a lot of hadith. Yeah, yeah. And many so hadith. all of them therefore not. not so we, we have to really be analyzed. Right, right. That's right. Really analyze it. Yeah, but, okay. Well, I, if you're being consistent, I think you'd have to say anything that Ibn Hisham has no, made. No, no. Has to be now skeptical. No, no. What we're we saying that Imam Malik wrote many hadith from Hisham. Many of these. Well, since Ma Ma Malik. Malik. Ma yeah. Malik. So he just Ma no, yes. He, since he moved to Iraq, he took none of his hadiths from Iraq. And there are documents as well. I can show you as well. The document that Imam Malik says he moved to Iraq. He, he thought his memory is just a little bit going. So Imam Malik never took anything from him. But Imam Malik wrote many of these since he was in Medina, quoting here in uh, Sham. So what I'm saying is that he quote many of these, but he never quote this of these. And he's the first uh, he's compiler. Why? These, these are big questions. Why none of his students, and many, ever quote this of these? His students, and many, ever quote this of An argument from silence is a poor argument. Why? It's a poor everybody argument. From, everybody from Iraq. One last point I'm going to make here. One plausible argument. Why the people from Iraq quoting this of these? So people say this. What happened in Sham when he moved there? Now, at that time, Iraq, Aisha already died, Ali Razilana, they all died. Oh, thanks, man. And many Iraqis, they were Shiani Ali. Very Ali. Many, many Iraqis, they were Shiani Ali. Meaning, they like Ali. They never like Aisha. Yeah. So, they start uh, talking about Aisha and her affair. Remember, there was one incident where Aisha left behind in the affair. desert? Yeah, yeah. So, they start talking, and Hisham was hearing this. They start talking that Aisha had an affair before the marriage. Before she got married, that man she knew before. That's why she was with him in the desert alone. So Hisham, to protect the, 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 the personhood of Aisha, his great, great aunt, he made up a hadith. He said, no, 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 no. Aisha was six years old when she got engaged. And nine years old when he comes into the house of Prophet Sassam. How could she have an affair before the marriage? She was so little. So he tried to cover that they, 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 they are blatant lies about Aisha. So he tried to, he made a story. They, this, they said this is this is plausible argument. Uh, he tried to protect his radar, but he made a bigger blunder 
in doing that. So th this is one of the arguments, and it's plausible. My friend, I, I'll let everyone make their own mind up about what they think about that argument. But I'm not convinced by that. I, I actually think that if you were to call into question these, these particular hadiths, you actually start to introduce a lot of problems. Namely, that you've just said that multiple books of those six most authentic collections of hadiths have problems with them. And I think once you've done that, you're basically rejecting the sunnah. That's, that's how I would say it. Maybe, I don't know. I'll let other people make their mind up about that. One more but thing we, I want to right. say, you, have, you know what mutawatir is. My understanding is it's multiple attestation from multiple people. Minimum like, four. Yeah, so it's repeated by, it's four in particular. Yeah. All right. Muslims are very, very careful when it comes to mutawatir hadith. It's very difficult to reject it because it comes from at least four. This hadith is not mutawatir hadith. This comes from maximum three people. And if you take that person out, it's called Abdullah. You don't know which Abdullah. It's a generic name, slave of God. So it's maximum three people. This does not apply, uh, qualify the criteria of Mutawatir. So anything Akbari Ahad, we have to critically analyze it. And these hadith, this is how I reject these hadith. They have many hidden defects in them. So this, this, this is my reason. You take right. it or leave it. I'm going to end this by saying, man, no Jesus is a thousand times better than, as an example and as a leader for you morally. And I would yes, encourage you to come yeah, to Jesus, I man. I'm not really. I read the Quran. I, I found it difficult, but I read it. The yeah. Quran is uh, 7,000 verses. 6, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Bible is what? 31,000 yeah. verses. Yeah, but there's yeah, there's five thousand words with such con continuity, succession, prophets, all pointing to yeah, the direction. I found many contradictions in the Bible. Let, let me just ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you agree that the succession of prophets in the Bible all point to Jesus? Old Testament and New Testament. Which prophet doesn't point to Jesus? All prophets point to Jesus. All prophets point to the Messiah coming. They all point to Jesus. The, the Old Testament points to Jesus. The New Testament points to Jesus. The whole Bible points to Jesus. You've not read it cover to cover. So how, how do you understand the continuity of the Bible if you haven't read it? Why do you reject well, it if you haven't read it? Whatever I read it in the Bible, for example, the Bible says God created heaven and earth in six days yeah. and then he rested and got refreshed. Yeah. I do not believe that God needed a rest or he needed to be refreshed. Do you believe that was natural language? Refreshed meaning you get your energy back. That's refreshment. What God says in the Quran, Allah has created heaven and earth in six days and no fatigue has touched him. I believe that God who cannot be get tired and not, no fatigue can touch it. But the Bible says he got refreshed. This is what you believe that God needs to be refreshed? No, we don't. No, no Christians believe that. That's what the Bible says. So I don't believe but that. But we obviously that don't take it to literal interpretation. Is that, from God. Is that, when, you, it's not a word is of that God. when you stop reading? No, there are many. many other well, you would God. have to be consistent and apply that to other verses in the Quran that say that Allah has hands, for example. Do you think that God has hands? Allah has hands? Uh, do you understand what hand means here? Eh? <laughs> well, it's a literal, according well, to Salafis. What your right hand possess? What Allah is talking about? By slaves? Well, that, well, Whatever your right hand possess. That's actually a different you, thing. I, I'm you, not talking about I, that one. No, no, no. Yeah. The Quran says that. Whatever right. your right hand possess. Many verses. When right hand doesn't mean you're right you're holding with your right hand. Meaning, that is under your authority. Hand here means authority. So when Allah hand, hand means okay. Allah's power. What does shin authority. mean? It doesn't mean literal hand. What does shin yeah, mean? It doesn't. Uh, Surah 68, yeah. Ayah 42. Yeah says that uh, Allah will reveal his shin okay. to the, uh, I think it's either the believers or the unbelievers on the day of resurrection. Again, again, that's what does a, that mean? That's an idiom okay, what's used it mean? for calamity. That's How do you know calamity. that? Okay, if you read the tafsir of Jalalain as well, he mentioned okay. it as well. Okay. He mentioned the verse poetry as well. The, the shin here means calamity. But where does Say he get his information? Sorry? Where does he get his understanding from? Because he came so far okay. after. Yeah. What, what is his? Yeah, yeah. How does which, he I don't know which one it is. Understand him. Just step it in. Arabic idiom. Idiom. Is idiom used in Arabic? Yeah, but I'm saying if people before didn't, you know, come to that conclusion, why would he, who comes like much later, have a better? What people before says what? That people would, before would, says that what? would take it literally. L literal shin. Yeah. Like who says the literal shin? Uh, I would say I would have to look, but I would believe exactly. people of okay. the opinion of like Ibn Taymiyyah would be of the opinion it would be literal because uh, those type of Salafis like Shamsi and stuff they take all those expressions as no, literal. I, I don't take as literal. Yeah, but I, it my makes question. More sense. Yeah, but and my that question. Day when you see calamity, yeah, you couldn't even bow yeah, down. But it's not about your opinion. My question was because you, I said, how come scholars before? believed it like why is his understanding better than those who came before who were nearer to Actually, the time Jalal and, and two people yeah but that's you said Jalal, then you yeah. asked me so to, you to name which scholar and I said someone like Ibn Taymiyyah 
Okay. So you, then you said, well, I believe, but I, that wasn't my question. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. No, what we have to look into it, which scholar says what, yeah? Okay. But what I'm saying is that even Jalalan said or not said, the way the word says, yes. when they see right. the shin that day, they could not even bow down, okay. meaning, meaning they will be so much in fear. Right. So Allah is not showing that Allah is the fear here. So it makes sense that it's a calamity. They seen the calamity approaching to them, right. so they couldn't, can't even bow down. That makes even more sense. So th that's why the scholars say this shin here is an idiom used in Arabic, talking about calamity. It's not, it's not a literal shin. Well, is that's that, a difference of opinion. Again, that's why you can that, appeal to that, someone that, like that, Ibn Taymiyyah. And I'll give it, for, so for example, the sun, um, sorry, the Quran says the sun sets in a muddy pool of water. Does right? it say exactly like that? Yes. It doesn't say a, murk, exactly like a, a murky pool, a hymea, or whatever it is. It doesn't is. say that. It says it appears to him. No. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because, again... Sorry, you, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I let take me just it back. explain he said, why. He found it. I'll explain why. He found why. it sitting in the sun, uh, if it, water. You will not find a scholar... When the, who was, what, the golden generation is the first three generations, right? Yeah. It's a laugh. You will not find a scholar in the first three generations who said it appeared. Because if you go to someone like um, Tabari... I, I, I just corrected myself. I yeah, said but, he found it. Yeah, but let me, just, found let me just make my point and you can respond. If you go to someone like the works of uh, Ibn um, al-Tabari, mm -hmm. who is praised for always using primary sources or going to uh, well, Tabari... He so sources. Okay. Tabari was me, unique in, you know what, any kind of interpretation, yes. he bring all kind of sources, weak, authentic, even fabricated, just to give you your own understanding. Take it, whatever you think is right. So he was so, what do you call it, unbiased in a way. Whatever information, Tabari brings every uh, understanding. And Tabari is the only tafsir which um, give commentary of every single verse. Every single verse he say has a commentary. He, he called, some from the prophet, some from the companion, some from the companions of the companion. So Tabari was like that, he bring all. And there are many are their weak hadith, uh, weak narrations Tabari brings. So Tabari is not all authentic as you say. So let me just uh, bring something up. And, um, because my point is, I'll, I'll bring the references, but within the first like 300 years of Islam, you will not find one scholar who said it appeared. They all used to debate and state that the sun literally, and that's how they understood it, if you look at the explanation, literally went into a, a pool of boiling water. Now this is the thing, and even that even goes with what you said about um, the prayer, that how can the, the community, the Ummah, not know five prayers and then when Bukhari writ, writ so that was their understanding. So that's, if you apply that same logic, you will not find one scholar within the first 300 years of Islam mm. who actually said what you say. So then the question is how come they understood it as that and argued that actually no, the son, because they spoke the Arabic that was delivered by Allah, not 300 years later where we use science to interpret something. Okay, but the they, Quranic, Quranic, well, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Quranic, let's not go to scholars first. Let, 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 let's say what exactly is this clear verse is saying. Allah says, Zulkarnan reached the setting of the sun and he found it setting in the pool of muddy water. Mm. It is talking about the perception of Zulkarnan. It's not talking about it's happening. For example, I can find the sun setting behind the trees. But this is my perception. Sun sets nowhere. Actually, the Bible says, pay the wages of the servants before the sun set. Does sun really set? Does the Bible say sun is setting somewhere? Sun doesn't set. The earth going around the sun. So here is a God is using the perception of a human being that he found it. So this is not talking about this. This is what the clear, the words you read it, that's how the understanding is. He, Allah never says that the sun was setting in the pool of muddy water when he reached that place. No. He said he found it. So it, to me, it's very clear. I don't need to go to any scholar. This is talking about perception. Yeah, you can interpret it in a different way. You can be interpreted that way as well and that way as well. But why strictly interpret in one literal way that it is going down in the, on, on, on the water? So wait, what did you say when Paperboy said to you that for the first 300 years? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'd like to see any scholar which says the sun literally goes under in the, in the pool of water. I'd like to see it to show me. That any I'm scholar says the sun actually literally goes in the in the sea, so or Zulkarnain actually saw literally going in the sea. I want to see. I, I never so seen. I'm, I'm trying to find, but because it's a bit mess. Like I'll get there. But did, who's Ibn, Ibn Al Ashad? Ibn Al Ashad. Yeah. Do you know who that is? No. I don't. Okay. So he says no. 
it does set in a muddy spring, exactly as the Quran clearly says. I don't know if someone can look at who he is. Uh, can I take a picture of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I never heard of it. Which book is that? Uh, I can't I just, know just it put happened. it in front of us. Like right, more to your left to okay. look into it. I, okay, right. I, I look into that. What, what about Tabari, Ibn Kathir? What about any companion? Did any hadith says that the sun literally goes in, into the water? Uh, sorry, one sec. So say that again. I, I, this, any companion ever said that the sun really literally goes into the water? Because if you talk about the generation, let's go to the first generation. They what they understand. Ibn Ashar, who that person is, they don't know. Report scholars are. Have you heard the name of Ashar? He said he's not okay. Because the reason why I'll, I'll answer that, but this is from Islam, uh, Islam students, and they ask the question which is more sound, Tafsir Ibn Kathir or Tafsir Ibn Sabari? So they quote uh, Ibn Taymiyyah said, with regard to the Tafsir that in circulation amongst the people, the most sound of them is the Tafsir of Muhammad Ibn Jarir al Tabari, for he mentions the views of the Salah with proven Isnad, and there is no bidah innovation in it and it does not transmit reports from dubious sources such as Mukal Mukal Tin Ibn Bakr and Al Kalbi, I don't know who they are. Who is it? Ibn Taymiyyah saying that? Yes. And and then we go to uh, look yeah, but when I quote Ibn Ta, uh, Tabari, yeah, yeah. I'm just giving other scholars opinions of him to show that he was deemed as very reliable. No, when you say uh, Tabari is all authentic, then I refuted that. I said Tabari is not all authentic. Okay. There are many weak narrations also Tabari mentioned it, just for the sake of bringing everything on the table. Just see for yourself. So okay. Tabari was like but, that. He's bringing all the opinions. That's why he got like what, six volumes. What, what I'm just massive giving you books. The opinions of the scholars, and it says he has relied on the views of he relied on the views of three generations of Musafarin amongst the Salaf, namely the Sahaba, the Tabayin, and the followers of the Tabayin. And he quotes their opinions with Isnads going back to them. So my point is, when we're talking about, that's why I said the earlier scholars. Let's see how they interpret the verses rather than going to people later on because what is their, their source? Because he quotes um, Which is Al Jalalain, who come much later on. So I the question is, how do they know? But like, what are their sources, and how are their sources better than the people who come before? So this is what Tabari says in from creation to the flood. Uh, he says, then then he said, for the sun and the moon, he creates east and west on the two sides of the earth and the two rims of heaven, 180 springs in the west of black clay. This is meant by God's word. He found it setting in a muddy spring, meaning by muddy, Hamia, black clay, and 180 springs in the east, likewise of black clay, bubbling and boiling like a pot when it boils furiously. He continued, every day and night, the sun has a new place where it rises and a new place of where it sets. So he's saying there's Liter different... Literally. That, you can read it for okay. yourself. Well, tell me, Tabari, who's he quoting? Because Tabari came many hundreds of years after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who is he so quoting? When did Al Jalalain come? No, no, no. Many thousands of years. No. But I, this is why... No, no, you can reject it, but yeah, but, Jalalain yeah, but, understanding but, fine. Yeah, but you're so saying, I can reject it, what Tabari's but, but, understanding but this, is. Yeah, but this I, is. I want to know who Tabari learned this from. Yeah, but this is the thing. You're saying, and I would have to look for it because I'm just kind of re going into this and it's quite new so I'd have to look for the sources but this is why I went to Islam QA a objective source that takes quotes from respected scholars such as Ibn Taymiyyah and so on so, and say his where he gets his information from is from the first three generations the Salaf the, the Sahaba and so forth so that's why I said why is his your interpretation of it appeared better than those who actually understood and spoke or new classical Arabic better than those who came much later on. Because that's why I said to you, give me one scholar from the first 300 years of Islam who said it appeared to him. They all, most of them who comment on it, say actually believe that it literally went into a, 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 uh, I a place. I am saying that that was his perception. Because but again, he found it. Allah is saying he found it. 
Is, Allah is not saying that sun was setting my, in my the pool of water. Is, that's not he said he question. found it. My question is, why is your understanding of Arabic better than the scholars who understood, who were nearer to the time, understood classical Arabic, and could also reference people uh, to get closer to the time to get an understanding of the text? So you're saying that these people were actually ignorant of the Arabic what that I'm they spoke. I'm saying that my Lord has helped me in the Quran. I can disagree with anyone I want hmm. apart from Quran and Sunnah. Hmm. So when I say Tabari, if Tabari was in front of me, I would ask, Ya Sheikh, tell me where you get this understanding from. What are you saying here? This is the, Allah is talking about the sun setting literally in the water. Where you get the understanding right. from? Did you get this understanding from the Prophet companions? Where do you get that understanding from? I, I, I have a right to ask this question. But he said, no, I am a scholar, you have to believe me. I'm saying, gave, no, I'm not just going to believe you. I gave because you, you could be right, you could be wrong. I gave you 300 years worth of scholars that all comment on it. So, I Ibn Ashaq, uh, so he captures a poem from Tuba and it says, And let those men, an example to this, the discerning, Dulkanain before me was a Muslim, conquered kings, thronged his court, east and west he ruled, yet he sought knowledge true from a learned sage. He saw where the sun sinks from a view in a pool of mud and fetid slime. So here is... He saw? Yes. He saw. That was his perception. Like where I, where like, the sun like sinks I, like I from... Guess. Not... It says the sinks from a view in a pool. So he's actually saying he saw where it actually sinks from. So we have more evidence. Oh, and you know what okay, Ibn Ishaq, hang on, hang on. who is Ibn Ishaq is? He, he was a, the biographer yes. of the, the, the yeah. prophet who put, put and, together. And, and what, Muslims, what Muslims say about him? Not everything is authentic. What Imam Malik does to him, do you know that? What did he, he do? He was kicked out of Medina making up stories. So how do Ibn you, Ishaq. most Muslims get a lot of their understanding of their early life, um, of the Prophet's early life no, no. from is Ibn Ishaq. No, Ibn Ishaq came like 130, 140 yeah, years after the Prophet. In terms of the so early what? years of the Prophet, yeah. where do most people get the information from? No, Ibn Ishaq. No, what I'm saying that all, not all his stories are right. right. That's what I'm saying. That was many have come from the word word of mouth as well. Right. Mutawatir. Generation to generation are telling the same story. And what I'm saying that these same people yes. kicked him out from Medina. Yes. So he went to live in Iraq because he was making up stories. And the reason why, why he done that? The question is. You know who was fa his father was? His grandfather and father were missionaries. And they became Muslim. Why? Because Ibn Khalid conquered Iran. So they were almost forced to become Muslim. They were not forced to become Muslim. But because they become Muslim, so they were many mitted. They become free men. So I am saying he has an agenda against Islam. I I I okay. Ibn Ishaq. Because his oh, ancestors were missionaries. Uh, no, because most okay. of the stories. Prophet right. going up in the mountain but to throw himself down come from him. Mm. The satanic verses come from Ibn Ishaq. So he was All a hater of the Prophet, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. But here's a, here's, this is why it goes to my Probably. challenge. Give me one person who gives an alternative view. And this is from Tabari. Um, it says, and I'll read it a little bit. It says, some of the readers of Medina and Basra read it as in a muddy spring, meaning that the sun sets in a spring that contains mud. While a group of readers of Medina and the majority of the people of Kufa read it as in a warm spring, meaning that the sun sets in a spring of warm water. The people of commentary have differed on the meaning of this, depending on the way you read the verse. Mentioning those who said, setting it in a spring, so and he gives a chain. So the people of the commentary yeah, I'm have different. It. I'm reading the, the but opinion. Tabari's saying that. Yeah, I'm reading their So in Tabari's time, there are people who have different interpretations. Yeah, so we'll see what the different interpretations are. Right, right. So he said, he said, Setting in a muddy spring, he said in black mud. Then he gives a narration where he says it's black mud. And then others say, uh, Ibn Kab said, as for the sun, it disappears in tatin, which match what Ibn Abbas said. And the word for that means mud. So it's the, the type of mud it sets in, explained it as black mud. Then he, uh, then it goes on, Nafi and Kab was asked about it and he said, you are more knowledgeable in the Quran than I am. He asked about the Sahaba, yeah. which said it. Tabari's quoting Sahaba, who uh, differed upon the uh, uh, opinion. And it, so he said, Nafi said that Kab was asked about it and he said, you are more knowledgeable in the Quran than I am. But I find it in the book, disappearing in black mud. Uh, then it goes on, uh, Ibn Abbas said it's black mud. Many said black mud. 
black mud, black mud, black mud. Some say Adit, and this is where the disagreement comes. So it goes to Said Jabra, Ibn Abbas, others said, rather it appears it disappears in a hot spring, not black mud. That's where the difference of opinion comes. So I've said, give me one person in the first 300 years that said, no, it actually means it appeared to him. I'd like to make a point here. Yeah. These uh, Tabaris quoting some Sahabas as well, companions as well, yeah, okay. Now, where did you find the sayings of the companions? In the books of Hadith. Six books of Hadith have sayings of the companions. This is a tafsir, commentary. Now, my question is, if Ibn Isa Abbas mm. says that, other companions say that, why we did not find this narrative with the authentic chain of narrations in Bukhari, Muslim, Nisai, Abu Dhabi, why we don't find that? Why we only found in the commentary of Tabari? If, we, because Tabari that's, need to that's Tabari, irrelevant. We go no, back no, to is, what we is, go back to what Ibn Taymiyyah well, said. I, I, I haven't finished my point. <laughs> point here is mm. because these are narratives of Tabari are missing from the other books, mm. meaning the other they, they know Bukhari has 300, uh, 3, 300,000 of these. Mm. He reject all of them. Keep only seven thousand. So it's possible that these are the narratives of Tabari brings in. The others think that this is, this is hearsay. Yeah, this is not true. One, one more point I want to make. We found authentic hadith about that. You, you must have read it. Yes. Prophet says, where does the sun say, set? Sayyid al-Khudri. Yeah? Yes. He said, ask the Prophet, where does the sun set? Yes. What did the Prophet say? In a, 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 a spring of hot water. In a haimiya. Okay. A spring of hot water. And? No, he says, where, where the sun, sun goes. That yes. was his question was. Yes. He says, sun goes under the water. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what the other second hadith says that, which is contradictory. It goes under the throne of Allah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So bring the hadith. Uh, you must have shown this. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is that this hadith three or four times. Yes. But all three, four times have different things. Right. One goes under the water, right. one goes under the throne of God, and one says something else as well. But none so of them say it appears from his perspective. Oh. No, no, but I, oh. Yeah, but this is didn't my point. Didn't you say, I say he found it. Yes, but That's here, the word of the Quran here, say that. Yeah, but this is he the said, thing. We're looking at a scholar who is discussing their views and their opinions of what people said. That's why I said, give me one person or one scholar within the first 300 years who agrees with your understanding. That's a mute that says, point. That's no, a mute point. because I'm giving you That's evidence. I'm. This, this is the, the, the difference. We're not talking about what you believe. We're talking about what you can prove. So I can prove that's what they believe because I'm giving you sources. You're giving me your no, conjecture you, you, you or your opinion. You give me Ibn Ishaq What are you yeah, giving me? Still, no, I, at least give me authentic hadith. What, what, what have you what, what, I've what, asked you for one source that agrees with your opinion. What I'm going to give you? In the first 300 years. Yes. What, I'm, what I'm going to give he's you? Not, I'm giving him sources. He's questioning the validity, but I'm, he's still not giving me one source that shows that that's how people understood it. And that's because, how it feels, right, right from the whole course of this discussion, it feels that there's a lot of corruption in some of the hadiths and you said the sunnah right. isn't the hadith and the hadiths aren't the sunnah but yeah. it feels like there's so much corruption in these commentaries that he's just given you evidence now for the first 300 years so that's what you need and to then I've, defend I've given that. him you need to i've given you scholars that have also stated where he gets his sources or his methodology well, well, he didn't give us a chain. No, but I'm saying when he Ibn Taymiyyah Abbas says that, did, did Tabari meet Ibn Abbas? Did he ever met Ibn Abbas? Obviously, if someone is close to the time, it's easier for them to get the information. So I'm saying that's no, why I'm saying to, to be that's about. what I'm saying to be generous to your argument. Give me one scholar yeah, that took it from your point of view because I've given you two. What I'm saying to you is uh, there are hadiths, there are three hadiths, authentic hadiths. I have to find it right now. Are they mutawati? So you don't even believe they're reliable? No, no it's more than Tabari. Tabari yeah, is, but is not even authentic, authentic hadiths. You said you only said mutawati. So if they're not mutawati, no, no. why are you using no, that as no, evidence? No, 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 no. I say this, mm. if Hadith is not mutawatir, rejecting a mutawatir is difficult because it comes, it comes forward. Right. But the other you have to critically analyze it. That doesn't mean Pretty if it's not mutawatir is wrong. I didn't so say that. Basically, I say uh, you have to you're not contradicting No, I'm not. I say you have yeah. to critically analyze it. There, there According some, to whose logic? Yours. There, there are some Hadith which mm. will go with the Quran. Maybe it's not mutawatir. If it goes with the Quran, I will accept it. For example, you say there is only one God. I say now because you're saying I'm going to reject it, because you're the only one saying that. Well, I'm saying that if something goes with the Quran, even if it comes from one, I'll accept it. But we're showing it. you Look, scholars that are showing you what goes with the you Quran. Show and me Isaac and Tabari. Right, and I've, he's quoting. You show me no companion. If, hold on, he, he gives you the chain. Right here. 
So regardless of if it's in... Uh, oh, I, in, I in, make my glasses here. Can you read the chain? Yeah, on your okay, on your so the Four first chain, yeah. who says, Muhammad al Muthahana mm -hmm. Ibn Abi Uday, Dawood, Ikramah, Ibn Abbas. And he found it setting in a muddy spring, he said, in black mud. Okay. Then we go to Ibn al Muthana, Ab Abid al Allah, Dawood, Ikramah, on the authority of Ibn Abbas. We've got Yunus, Ibn Wahib, Nafi, Abu Natim, Abu al Rahim, al Araj, Ibn Abbas. If this now, is a court case, I would be like leaning towards him. him. Now the point here is, mm. if this Narish chain is there, mm. why none of the books, Bukhari, Muslim, Nisai, Abu Dawud, they never quote this hadith? Because this is, not, this is not a hadith, this is quoting their... Uh, their un is giving a chain. Yeah, of their opinion, of the understanding. Yeah. So Bukhari contains what? The actual hadith, the sayings of the Prophet? No, no, not all. No, no. So you're saying there's everyone's a, opinion. Are of the companions as well. Yeah, there. but so you're saying everyone's opinion has to be in Bukhari. Yeah, because there are. There no, are. For there's one of these. There's, there's, there's a companion say before I became yeah, Muslim, I is, saw there was the monkeys yeah. and the monkeys were stoning yeah, the, the, the she she yeah, monkey yeah is, because she committed adultery. So I joined them as well. Prophet has nothing to do with it. Yeah, but this is Prophet the whole, is not even there. Again, but, it's, but this and this is in the Bukhari this doesn't and Muslim. Help your argument because that is a saying or something someone saw. But this is the explanation of a, the Quranic verse. So those don't have to be in the hadith because the hadiths are more about the stories about as again stoning monkeys. This is the hadiths aren't. I heard this is the Don't understanding. Don't you know that there's explanation of tafsir of the Quran in the Hadith? But not every single Hadith has an explanation. No, no, I'm not saying that. But there are tafsir of the Quran in the Hadith, Bukhari. Yeah. yeah in but Muslim not, as well. Yeah, but not every Tafsir al Quran. There's the chapter called Tafsir al Quran, and it's mentioned this companion say this, this. The, 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 the Prophet yeah, says but, the, the, this meaning of this verse is like this, this, this. Yeah. So there are. Exactly. So why this one is not in there? Because it be. no, it doesn't have to be. Because this is <coughs> quoting people from the time saying how did they they understand not what did the prophet say but how did they understand That's the why, meaning of the well, I'm saying and he's the, giving you a chain on authentic chain well, i'm saying that these are not authentic because that's why the Bukhari and Muslim other books didn't bring it no. because they didn't thought it was right. That, no, they thought it was the if we, if you go, the same. If we, we can look at Bukhari or um, any uh, or um, Muslim now and we look at through the hadiths, none of them would the, go if we go through all the hadiths, they're not all going to say this is the exact understanding of the verse in the Quran or this is how people understood it at the time. That's why he is quoting people at the time how they understood the verse. And those don't need to be in the hadith. And that's where you're trying to conflict so too. They, 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 no, they if, if they are not, there's a good reason why they're not in okay, there. Give me, so okay, give reason. me a hadith that explains the meaning from Bukhari or Muslim that explains the verse 929, for example. You should be able to show 929. that. 929? Yeah. What does it mean? Because you're saying... Remind me of the verse, what's it? Uh, go, uh, go and fight the disbelievers, those who don't be, believe in Allah. No, slay no, slay no, them where you ever... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if what you're saying is correct, mm. you should be able to find me the exact like replica of this where people are explaining what the meaning is. Let me open it what it says. Or the discussion around it. I don't think I need to go anywhere. I'm saying if that's your claim... I can that, just read the Quran no, and no, understand but that. You see, you're changing it. No. You're, you, you said the Hadith should ex include the explanation of the verses like where the, in regard to the uh, sun setting in a muddy pool, where well, you have the companions speaking about it in the interpretation, you made the claim that this, this should be in Bukhari or Muslim. So I'm saying if that your logic is consistent, we should then be able to pick another verse and see in Bukhari or Muslim where there's a discussion on the meaning, because that means every verse has been discussed. What, what I'm saying that if Tabari found the chain, yeah, I'm sure Bukhari and Muslim must have heard that as well. They came after Tabari, isn't it? But well, I'm sure Muslim. everything so has what, a chain. What I'm saying that. What is the reason that they didn't bring this hadith narrative in their books? What's the reason? Because this is not a hadith. It's possible that this, this, is, just, this is Tabari's own understanding. No, this is and not a hadith. Has to do this is just them discussing how they... Like, for example, we'll go back to the beginning. It says, the readers differed on how to read it. Some readers of Medina and Basra read it as meaning the sun sets in the spring that contains mud. Why would that be in the hadith, how the people in uh, uh, Basra and Medina understood it? That's got nothing to do with being in the hadith. 
And that's why I'm saying what you're, the argument you're presenting is false because he's saying in Kufra, this is how they understood it. In another area, this is how they understood it. So why would that explanation need this to be in the Quran? says that, the Prophet says that. This that's is not my, that's, not, yeah, that's yeah. not what I'm okay. saying. No, no, the point here is in Sahih Hadith, Prophet did say that. Say what? I told you, Khudri. And how, yes. Khudri, yeah. The, okay. Those are these. Yeah, bring the, bring no, the hadith. No, well, I can't find these hadith right now, but uh, there are hadith. Yes. With, with, they contradict two right. or three hadith. So that just shows One you says, your hadith no, are no, 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 yeah, yeah, You're pretty prophet contradicts himself. No, no, prophet never contradicts himself. How do you he, know? he doesn't, because he, he was inspired by God. That's your, that's, that's no. a false, no, that, he's <laughs> I don't know what the right word, that's a false claim. But your argument is, because he's inspired by uh, um, God. God protects him from any kind of a mistake, right. yes. That's, that's, a fall that's a fallacy in itself, because you're presuming that God actually inspired him. So therefore, we can reject that, no, because, because I don't got, believe. We, we got the Quran. That we got the Quran. The Quran is... If I go to a scientist and say, is this from Quran God, what are they is, going to Quran say? Quran is error-free without any kind of a, a fallacies or mistakes no, in the Quran. No, so once we have that, then we come, we, you're then not, we come not true, You're not making, no, it is you're not making no. an I objective. I challenge this, is called, this is called the two cocaine fallacy. You're and it's like, an it's, a double, it's a double fallacy. You can't um, say, you can't say the prophet didn't contradict himself because it's from God. That's your belief. I God protects him. But again, that's your belief. That's not objective yeah. because if you bring two hadith that contradict each other, in your opinion, there must be that. That's the explanation. But on, obje on, a, on an objective level, it's in a contradiction, and that would be proof that either he contradicts himself or that the hadiths are unreliable. That, that, no, what, no, we believe he's a prophet of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so, saying that's no problem. So what are we saying? But the people that's not in the down in the chain. Yes, they misheard hadiths. Like uh, they, they hear say the Chinese whispers, so they, somebody says this and somebody says that. So that's why when the hadith contradicts, we just leave there. For example, Solomon, he has 99 wives, he has slept with all, all of the 99. That's against akal, They're against common sense as well. Oh, and those why? hadiths are contradictory, meaning one hadith says he, he, she give birth to a half child, some mm. says give to the dead child, yeah. some says to the disabled child. And some say it was the angel who was his companion. Some say it was the person who was his companion. Yes. So there are so many contradictions. Right. When hadith that, contradicts like that, yes. we leave them. We, no, we, we don't no, that's, ponder upon No, them. you leave them, but others don't. Yeah, that's the problem. That's your you're criteria. Picking and but that makes sense. Yeah, but exactly. That makes that's sense. what you I'm saying. But, you're, you're, yeah, but you can't I'm saying what makes sense. your criteria, yes. Other Muslims who are more, uh, I don't know what the word is. No, uh, how more, can you believe in a contradictory, contradictory thing? Uh, yeah, exactly. How can you explain contradictory things? I'm saying that's your understanding. But I'm saying if we look at the religious scholars, the Salaf, Shamsi, yeah. they see it differently. So I'm saying for you... I like to see what, how they contra do contradictory that, this things. This is why, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Objectively sense. looking at it, I actually, actually this is why it, there's contra it's like me saying, you saying this shirt is blue. Um, sorry, this shirt is purple. And you're like, no, it's blue. And I'm like, no, I believe it's purple. It doesn't mean I'm right because I keep, I'm adamant that it's purple and that's what you're doing because objectively this is okay, a purple so what show. what that proves? That proves, proves that they both can't be right. No, it proves that there's a contradiction that we have that been found and you're then using cognitive dissonance to dis explain away why there's a problem. But other people just no, that accept proves, it. That proves the Bukhari and Muslim, the books of Hadith and they are not error free. That exactly, really proves. Yes. So, so if there are contradictions we found, yes. they all can't be right. Exactly. That's what he proves. Right. So for, for that reason, yes. we have to analyze every hadith we read. Yes. Hadith is not a word of God. Yes. Bukhari is not authorized by Prophet mm -hmm. So whatever they say, we respect it, right. but we analyze critically. Right. But, but we, this is we, thing. We, we, we are in a stage now, we're in a stage of circuit reason. So you can always go with your preconceptions. And Paperboy can go with his preconceptions, but we're not getting to the truth of the matter. And what you said at the beginning of the conversation is you're a searcher for the truth. You want to establish the truth. So what I'm trying to understand is you haven't read the whole Bible from cover to cover. You don't understand the chronology, the, the continuity that's in the Bible. And we are arguing now about um, whether the sun sets in a pool of muddy water. What I would like to have a conversation with you about is if Jesus is God, um, and he is the only way that we're going to get to heaven and you you don't believe that and you're not going to you're, you're, you're not going to say that he's God you're not going to acknowledge he's God 
and the whole Bible is full of Trinitarian scriptures which point towards Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the Father being one. Now, when we when we have yeah, the whole Bible, right. I spent a year. And, and let me just. I like to see where Moses let, says let, that. Let me just make a, another conclusion. So I, I didn't read it. And Tabari it says in the end, he says, and in my opinion, in my mind, the correct opinion is to say they are both popular readings in the land, and each one has a correctness about it and an understandable meaning, and neither contradicts the other. For it is possible that the sun sets in a hot spring that has mud and sludge. So a reader who uses hot spring is describing its temperature, and the reader who uses muddy spring is describing it as the mud has, as it is describing that it has mud and sludge. Both versions have narrated to us. He Whoa. never says, the third opinion is that it was his, his. View, it appeared to him. Yeah. And that's why I challenge you, give me from the first 300 years, one person, because he's going through the land, how people understood it and the differences of opinion. He's saying actually there's two opinions and they're both correct. Not that there's, there's a third opinion. So when someone like Al Jalalain comes to, thousands of years later, I'm asking you, where are they getting their information from? I, I tell you, that to me is an argument from, from silence. And what I'm worried about is, you know, there's no books, there was no publishing that Jesus didn't die on the cross. You know, there was no contesting that until Muhammad. But there weren't, there weren't people in, in Jerusalem that said he didn't die. Um, it wasn't Jesus on the cross, it was Judas. So we believe that um, the Bible is perfectly preserved, the message of the Bible. There might be some words changed in different versions, but the message of the Bible, all Christians agree that Jesus is the Messiah, that he died on the cross to save us from our sins, and that's the only salvation the world offers. And you are one of these these people that you, you seem to have a perfectly reasonable conversation, giving people time to speak. What I've been listening to today, though, is there are there are a lot of contradictions in the hadiths, which you have to pick and choose, because he's saying the first 300 years you haven't got any evidence. No, but he's Tabari's pointing Tabari's to other that. people. Is Tabari saying that? Yeah, but he's pointing to other people. But there's no other scholars are saying that. What Tabari is saying okay. that? Okay. 300, 300 years, he only brings Tabari and Ibn Isaac. Okay. But I, I have to look into that as well. Can, I, can we can we finish this and then we'll we'll, we'll okay. go we'll go to you. So, so yeah, all in 300 years, all yes. you find is Tabari. And no, I, 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 I said if I spend more time, I could yeah, yeah. find more. So, but so do I, I haven't spent, but I'll, yeah. I'll spend time as well. Right. I'll look into that as well. So, but I'm, what I'm saying, they're authentic hadiths which I can't find right now. Yeah. What I'm saying on the camera right now, yeah. if I'm, if I'm lying, you can catch me. There's a hadith about this. Prophet says that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Khudri, what's the full name? Was Khudri? And, but let, let, can I just make a comment what's on that quickly? Like if, if, if he found that in the Bible, he would say yeah. that's an evidence of that, a contradiction in the Bible. No, but, yeah. but his I, cognitive reasoning... No, you're not listening to me. I, yes. But well, hadith is not a word of God. Yeah. You so say Bible is a word of God. But I'm, so why are you using the hadith? hadith is not perfect. Yeah, so, hadith can so be we right can and hadith can be wrong. So we can discard, discard no, the hadith. No, no. Yeah. What you're quoting is tafsir. Yeah, I'm saying... I'm going to, I'm going to quote okay. you what hadith says. Yeah. And hadith are contradictory but, but about listen, this. But listen to what you're saying. Listen to what you're saying. Something has contradictory Listen, believe listen, to, listen to the difference of two. You don't yeah, but we don't Abbas, follow. Listen then to the go difference. Under the throne of God. Listen, and under, listen, listen to the difference in our argument. I'm giving you people who are quoting the interpretation of the Quran. And they can be You're right giving me hadiths which you say are unreliable anyway, unless they're mutawatti, to argue against the Quran to say, well, this was said in the hadith which we you don't believe in. Ah, uh, just a screenshot. Okay, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, next time, I don't know if you have to see Tabari. So look, look what here's, I'm saying right here's now. the Arabic from the tafsir. Can I reject Tabari or not? I'm saying. Can I or not? I'm saying you can reject him, but I'm saying my point was: give me one person who then agreed with your understanding that it was from his viewpoint, because I've given you. Does it have to be somebody? I can't reject Tabari from the free. I'm saying, if you want to reject him, give yeah. me someone from the first 300 years of Islam. No, why? Why can't I, because, I reject Tabari from because, my knowledge? Because it, this goes knowledge. to your point. You said, how can Bukhari write that there are five prayers for a Muslim and the 300 years before how many a year? They didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, how can then the same person, the Tabari, come and write and say something stupid if people believe that it was from his perspective? 
Who's so the standards, the standards. Who's the people agree with him? No, but the standards you are using. When they cut, I'm saying. I'm, that's why I said to you, give me from the first 300 years before there was actual scientific knowledge that this can't be true. That someone agreed with that opinion, that, that understanding. I think what you need to do is this: mm. to make your point solid, mm. you need to bring multiple scholars for the first 300 years, yes. 10, 20, whatever, because there must be hundreds. I've given you all, Tabari all who quoted yeah, the you, Sahaba, you, 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 and he's rejecting them. It's Tabari's word, yeah. It's Tabari's word. Oh, he's Bukhari, okay. Bukhari doesn't agree with Tabari. So, yeah. so your, your okay. basically your argument is anything you disagree with, you reject. Okay, let me speak. But then you so, then you make an argument you, you exactly. keep, with no reference no, no, you to keep, it. You keep using this 300 years, 300 years. Mm. If you show me like 20 scholars, he's saying 300 years. I'm gonna last. This is the last interruction I'm gonna make. But this is the you same point you. Uh, uh, that's why I'm gonna that. do it the last time. But this is the same point you made to advocate for five, five times a day. That's the logic you use. I'm using the same logic to say how can then people in the different areas which he's naming discuss and say whether it just set it no, in a black you court or my argument about five prayers okay, go on. my five prayers argument was this mm. that you people say five prayers are not mentioning mentioned in the Quran yes. yeah so without hadith you wouldn't know how many prayers you do so the answer to their question is if Bukhari was never ever written mm. people were doing five prayers from the very beginning it's right. not that Bukhari who told people right how is possible yes. that Bukhari says five prayers and people say oh we didn't know that thank right. you very much that was the argument I was making. Now let me take that same argument. That we without, that same without, argument. Without, without Tabari, the same people in Kufra and the other regions would have still been discussing whether the sun sets in a black uh, muddy pool or a hot spring. Now that, that is None of the them argument would, have, would have been discussing whether it came from his perception because no one discussed that. Yeah. So it's the same argument. No, the, it's exactly the same argument with the same standards that he's using with you. No, no, no. Exactly the no, same. No, no, it's not. All, no. That, all that's happened can, is semantics. Can, can Tabari be wrong? I'm saying the people because take out, I, that, listen I to what I said. Wrong. Listen to what I said. I didn't I said, say that. I, said, I made take, my point. I said take out Tabari, yeah. the people in Kufra and the areas he mentioned would have still been discussing whether it sets in a black a muddy spring or just a, a spring. Boiling water. So you don't need Tabari. But so I'm saying they would have still been discussing yeah, it's that. that it's Tabari saying that, isn't it? saying that. And it's people you saying about that. the prayers. It's his word. His word. And, and it's your word <laughs> saying well, about look, the prayers. Look, exactly. I also said that Bukhari has contradictions then. Bukhari is Muslim, yeah? So meaning Bukhari can be right and wrong as well. Even though we write five prayers, that doesn't mean but so there were never you. five prayers before. But so can but you, you be right and wrong. You must understand Tabari can argument. be wrong. Or hear what he's saying. No, it doesn't have to do anything with the five prayers. No, no. People say that without Bukhari, Muslims doesn't know how many prayers you have to do. People make that claim. Okay. Because in the Quran it says three prayers. Does it say three prayers? It's mentioning three. Yeah. When I talk, this is five people. Yeah. If I mention three of you, it doesn't mean it's only three of you. Yeah, but people will say no, 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 because no, no, of the hadith. No, 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 I'm saying if there's five people here, I'm talking about only three people. Yeah. It doesn't mean there is only three people there. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the first thing. And you put add, add to that when the, when the prophet says, mm -hmm. you pray as you see me pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the sunnah. That's what we're talking about, that's the sunnah. Right. You have a, the, the actual sunnah, what people, what a prophet says, mm -hmm. what, prof, what a prophet does. Right. How do we know that uh, there is a prayer of five of five, uh, five times a day? Yeah. And how each one we the, pray? Because the people knew and they he had was, followed the prophet. And this is leading, the same line of argument leading, I'm using. He was leading them. Right. Each prayer, yes. he was watching and, what, to, what to do and that's every what, single prayer. And that's why I'm saying, so be, we, the, but that's what I'm saying, use that same logic for the where the sun sets. Because people were discussing, he's saying the third option was never discussed of it appeared to him. That's what you have to do to then get around the fact that this would prove that the Quran is not from God. It's called um, cognitive dissonance. Can we do this, this very debate about sons? Oh, just one thing I was there yeah. next week. Yeah, that's because fine. I'll do my research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you, you ask me a question. Yeah. Show me from the very 300 years, first 300 yeah, yeah. years. So I'll look into that, okay. I'll do my own research, yeah, yeah. I'll answer you that. Okay. But I will answer about the five prayers. You want to say something? I'll answer you about the five right. prayers. So I look forward to seeing that so debate. Yeah, yeah. Let's just quickly conclude. Yeah. You, you give your last word and I'll give mine. No, I disagree that the Quran says literally the sun is setting in the pool of muddy water. It's the perception of Zulkarnan, that's what I, I mean. But he asked me a question, showed me the first 300 years, some scholars say what I'm saying. So I say I'm going to look into that. 
Yeah. So uh, until I look into that, I won't go any further with that. Yeah. And what what he will find when he looks into it is that after around the first 300 years, that's when this opinion started to change, um, because obviously you know people travel around the world and people actually realise this is not true. So then they have to reinterpret the meaning of the Quran. That's why people who took it the Quran for what it was literally they understood it as that and that's why for example Tabari when he mentions the discussions in the different places he says there's only two interpretations and he then tries to say they're both correct so next week what we'll find is that he won't be able to find anyone and then we'll have to say this is proof if we're objective that and Muslims say the Salaf the first three hundred first three generations were the best Muslims so what we'll have to then say is that the first three generations were all idiots, the Sahaba were all idiots because if you cannot prove, provide evidence, not to say, oh, it doesn't make sense because we're going on evidence which I provided, then we have to assume that their opinions are the same. And if you disagree, then prove evidence and we'll see next week whether you can do that. That is compelling, uh, compelling, uh, can you, okay, that is compelling from Paperboy. Thank you for a lovely debate. Thank you, gents, for a lovely debate. God bless you.